Hey folks and welcome to Truck King and another exciting video because we finally have our hands on this. That of course is the brand new Ford Bronco and the way you're looking at it here, that's a Badlands with the Sasquatch package which means we got a big set of hairy 35 inch tires and you know we're going to put them to the test. So in this video we'll take it for a drive on road, we'll talk about it there and then we'll head off road. We'll try out all the features and we'll see if this thing really stacks up to the Jeep Wrangler or not. power plants you can get with your Bronco, either a 2.3 liter four-cylinder turbocharged engine or a larger 2.7 liter V6 turbo and that's what we're looking at here today. Now this larger power plant makes 330 horsepower and 415 pound-feet of torque sent through an eight-speed automatic and yes every single Bronco sold will be four-wheel drive. Now some of the other goodies that we have here on our Bronco Dana 44 axles in the front and in the rear. Get the hood there. And then of course, this Bronco has independent front suspension. That was really a big deal because the Wrangler doesn't have it. So it'll be interesting to see how that stacks up on the road. Now, another way the Bronco is very reminiscent of the Jeep Wrangler is with its styling. And, and no, I don't mean they look the same, but Ford did the same thing Jeep did. They took the old Bronco and they said, we need to make the new one look like that one but it has to look modern. And to my eye, they nailed it. I, I love the Bronco lettering across the grill. I think it looks big and tough. Uh, these hooks up here on the hood corners, you can actually use them. They have a max load of 150 pounds and you can use them to hook up things onto the roof like a kayak or a boat. But I just think these are a cool styling feature. They give the Bronco this kind of unique feel to it. Uh, yeah, I love the way it looks. You guys let me know, what do you think of the styling? If you want to know what you can haul with your Bronco, well, once it's properly equipped, and it actually doesn't matter which engine you get, the Bronco here can tow up to 3,500 pounds. And when we're talking about payload, let's take a look. This Bronco, as you see it here today, has a max payload rating of 925 pounds. So keep in mind, again, we have the Sasquatch package and Badlands, so we have you know lockers and tires and all kinds of features here. Once you load up those features, you lose payload. So once you get into something like this, you're about 925 pounds, you're gonna be in that area. So folks, it's time for another episode of Does Steve Fit? And this is an interesting one. I don't know what's gonna happen here. Let's find out. Okay. Well, this is not bad, although I will say I pulled this seat forward from where I was sitting to get myself a little bit more leg room, and I have just enough headroom. My head is rubbing up here. So uh, I guess I would say I just fit, but I don't fit comfortably. Now this is 36.3 inches of rear seat leg room. And the one thing I wanna point out, if you go for a two-door Bronco, you get 35.7 inches. So you, you actually get basically the same leg room in a four-door or a two-door. The difference is gonna be back there in the storage. But all of that said, uh, yeah, for bigger people, I stand at about six foot two. This back seat's a little tight. Now let's see what I have down here. I do have two USB ports and a three prong plug, which is always nice, 400 watts right there. Plus you have your window controls down here in the center. And then this is really cool too. The back of the seats here has been set up to accept uh, Molly accessories. So you can get all kinds of different bags and stuff that'll attach onto that seat. And then of course you do have the little uh, storage pocket down there too. Here's one more thing the Bronco has that the Wrangler doesn't. Rear side curtain airbags packed into the pillar right up here. So if you do have a collision, those side curtains will activate. And no, the Wrangler still does not have rear side curtains, but they did get them here in the Bronco. Let's continue down the side of the Bronco and I have more to show you. And I'll remind you, this is a Badlands model, which is basically the Bronco equivalent to 
the Wrangler Rubicon. This is the go anywhere off-road Bronco. Plus we have the Sasquatch package, so we get those big tires. So I want to do this walk around. What I want to show you here and focus on are the mirrors. They're just normal mirrors, but here's what's interesting. They're cowl mounted rather than mounted to the door because for years when guys would take the doors off their Jeep Wranglers, they'd complain that they lost their mirrors. Well, Ford found a way around that by putting the mirrors up here on the cowl. Now, as we move back, you'll see this Bronco here today has the hard top on it, but here in Canada, these four door models are gonna come with a standard soft top, every single one of the four door models. And then if you want the hard top, you have to option up to it. Um, I mean, it worked fine today. We didn't really get a chance to take it all apart. We'll work on some of that stuff in an upcoming video. Now, as we get around the back here, a couple things to point out. Um, of course, a full-size spare tire. And let me talk about the tire. So this is a Goodyear Wrangler territory. These tires are popping up everywhere. Uh, they were released with the new TRX from Ram. This is now what comes on the Tacoma TRD Pro. And now here's Ford using them on the Bronco. So this is really becoming an increasingly popular set of all-terrains. And uh, we'll put them to the test today, but I already liked them. They were great on the TRX. Now let's open it up real quick. This is a classic swing gate. So she swings open and then the glass flips up to reveal quite a bit of storage space actually. You got nice D-rings down here in all four of the corners, plus a little bit of storage under the floor and your jacks back here. This is a really big usable space back here. And what can I say? I'm so excited guys, we're finally with the Bronco. Let's get out there and hit the road and take her for a drive. All right folks, well, here we are finally in the Bronco off-road. Now the off-road course we're on here today is at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. It's not that aggressive, but it's enough for us to get our first initial feeling of this Bronco. And I've been driving here now for, you know, less than five minutes. I'll give you my first impression. Dad actually said this off camera. The sight lines are great, but then because it's this big square hood and you have those plastic hooks right up at your corners, you really know where the end of that hood is. You know where those fenders are. I love how much I can see from behind the wheel. Um, and you know what? This, I'm probably gonna end up saying this a lot. It feels like a Wrangler. It has that tall, high position that a Wrangler does. The Ford engineers obviously drove a lot of Jeeps when they were developing the Bronco, clearly. Yeah, and for a change, they're not actually denying it. I mean, they, they accept the Jeep as a great product and uh, they're copying them. And yeah, good for them because it's nice to have another player in the market. This thing is definitely a competitor. Now we're here in our Badlands model. Uh, we're gonna lock up our differentials. They got these handy dandy buttons up here on the dash. And that was really quick, nice. No rocking, nothing there. It just locked right in. We're coming up this sandy hill. Oh, you feel low range, feels good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's nothing. Um, the Bronco we're in here too is a Sasquatch. So we're talking about 35 inch Goodyear Wrangler territory tires. Uh, yeah, I, you know, it's just eating this up and it feels really at home out here, really natural. And just talking about these switches, right up here we've got the sway bar, we've got the front and rear lockers, we've also got this uh, uh, sharp turn. Trail uh, turn assist. Trail turn assist, which basically uh, locks up one rear wheel. But what I wanted to say was that I saw this sort of a setup in a Mercedes G-Wagon like 20 years ago. And I, I love it because it's right up here on the dashboard. It's very easy to get at with your right hand. And uh, it's back then, I remember calling it playing the piano because you are gonna lock and unlock and use this stuff wow. as you go along the trail. Along with it. Two. So now, <laughs> see the and I, I remember reading about that. The Jeep doesn't do that. The Jeep will not disconnect under pressure. Wow. Yeah, it's that's like, cool, man. It's like dropping into the hole big time. That's cool. Okay, so now we're gonna give our first go at trail turn assist. Assist is on. Diffs are unlocked. <laughs> Well, that's significant. Wow. Yeah, I just tried to make that corner without it on and it, no chance it was doing it. But right there, hit it with a bit of speed and man, that's handy. Yeah, it's like a handbrake turn. Yeah, literally, right? Being able to grab just one rear wheel. Except with handbrake, you can only ever do it in one direction. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> 
Yeah, how smart, man. These systems are becoming so much more common and they're just taking off-roading and they're uh, making vehicles so much smarter than they ever have been before. However, to that point, because a lot of guys are gonna go, oh, everything is taking the fun out of off-roading because uh, the machine's doing it all for you. You still need to know how to use it and when to use it. Okay, now we're trying another one of the Bronco's tricks. This is trail control with one pedal drive. So you should only need the throttle. The idea here is, as it says, you just use the one foot, and then the second I lift, yeah. it brings us to a stop. Yeah, the brake comes on. Very cool. Now what's interesting, it totally changes the throttle calibration. Like I'm digging into the pedal right now like a quarter of the way to really get it moving. So it obviously changes you know, how the pedal works and how it feels. Yeah, very weird. Left. This is, oh, you're right. See, it's weird, I panicked there, I lifted, and then it just stopped me. <laughs> well, that's probably better than keep them rolling. Yeah, this is, you know, yet another system here where it definitely takes some getting used to. I'm also totally locked up right now, winding through some tight trails, but so far, it feels good. And... It's, it's gonna take some relearning for those guys who drive with two feet off-road. Yeah, exactly. Because it essentially does the same thing, but you don't only need the one foot. Yeah, it's strange though. It's really strange to get used to. I keep lifting off, waiting for us to roll, and uh, nope, you just don't go anywhere. Yeah. Now what's interesting is you don't have to use the one pedal drive. You can use what they call regular trail control. So I believe I hit the cancel button here. Uh, trail control, use cancel button to resume. Okay, so now <laughs> it's regular trail control, which means I can set my speed using the plus and minus buttons. Now I've got it at nine kilometers an hour. Now I'm not touching the gas or the brake. My foot's right off and it's just doing it for me. There's so many different tricks here and one pedal drive and trail control. I mean, they kind of do the same thing. So Ford's gotten to the point where they're not just offering you, you know, more off-road settings. It's it's the settings that do the same thing in a different way. Well, like, and you know, also I kind of I kind of like the the fact that you will decide what you like and what you don't like. Yeah. You only you only use what you what you want. Yeah. And there's combinations as well. Yeah, yeah, and then with credit to Ford, they still have a seven-speed manual you can get in the Bronco with a real crawler gear. I mean, unless you know better, I don't think there's been a crawler gear on a vehicle probably in 30 years. Yeah, it's you know? been a long time. So they kind of went out of their way to not only go for all these cool electronics, but to have a real, you know, quote-unquote hardcore off-road feature like that, so. I'm struggling to find things to complain about. So yeah, <laughs> well, they want to appeal to everybody. They don't want any other sort of off-roader guys, whether it's the Toyota crowd or the Jeep crowd, coming back and saying, well, they don't have this, they don't have that. They really went out of their way to make sure that you've got it all. Yeah. Well, folks, now we are off the dirt and on the highway arguably where most Broncos will live most of their lives. So it's very important to talk about what this thing drives like on the pavement. And um, I think it's defined by the fact that it's independent front suspension. Unlike the Wrangler, they decided to go IFS. That's doing the check right now. That's not bad. Yeah, it's it tracks pretty well. And that's always the complaint about the Wrangler. That is a, a, a hard vehicle to drive. I like to say it's a fatiguing vehicle to drive because you're always putting in some kind of input. There's never a moment where you can kind of relax. You're always driving it because it likes to wander. And that's mostly a, a, an effect of the front axle, the rear axle, and then the fact that this vehicle too is so squared off. The aerodynamics aren't great. So anyways, the IFS is, is gonna get rid of some of that. Um, it's still noisy in here, you know, we still got a removable roof, plus this one has the Sasquatch package, so 35 inch tires. You do hear those tires, no doubt about it. But overall, from my butt over here, nicer on road than the Wrangler. And I think that's what Ford wants to hear. Um, but what do you feel, you're driving? Well, and that's the key, is like, what are you comparing it to? Um, is, is it, uh, is it more fatiguing and noisier and rougher than uh, many cars? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, or an escape. However, like if, if Wrangler is your chief competition, if you're in the market and Ford knows that that's really the only other thing you're gonna cross shop, then all they gotta do is beat Wrangler. Yeah, you're right and about that. So, 
certainly from a steering point of view, I like it better than I like most Wranglers. Um, it's certainly as noisy as a Wrangler. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so get used to listening to the tires. Now, granted, they don't uh, sing or hum, um, but I'm just saying to Steve, so they, they sound windy. <laughs> it sounds like there's this, this stiff breeze blowing in here right now. So <laughs> that's kind of funny. But uh, any dedicated sort of off-road vehicle is going to make you pay a price on road. Yep. I don't know. I So far, nobody has ever figured out how to uh, mitigate that. And we're coming from a stop sign, Dad. Let's feel the power. Oh, there it is. <laughs> well, there's some lag there. So this is the 2.7 turbo, and yeah, that felt like kind of two beats to, to really get the EcoBoost yeah. back in. Yeah. Um, but I mean, once that power kicked in, it did feel nice and strong. No, it definitely went, but uh, yeah, it was uh, it was laggy. Mm -hmm. And that's another interesting point. Um, to me anyways is, is fuel economy and you just said it there has to be trade-offs and that's actually another trade-off the reason why they're not telling us all about the fuel economy why it's not a big headline because it's not great this one we're in right here with the 27 and the badlands package is 17 miles per gallon city highway and combined i'll throw up the canadian numbers here so you can see them but that's just another point to what dad was saying you know there's always going to be a trade-off and if you get massive tires and a big squared off front end well you're going to pay for it at the gas pump. Well, so we are getting close to our end of the day with this Bronco. And I should let you guys know, this is a Ford Canada event. Dad and I only had this Bronco right here for about four hours. So this is just a preliminary look. As soon as we can get a Bronco with the Sasquatch package back at Ironwood, you know we will. We want to put it up the left hook. We want to send it up the hydro line. And we want to test that seven speed manual. So all of that will come on the channel. Like I said, today's really our first look. And I think the last thing we haven't touched on Dad, is price. So you've got the build sheet. Why don't you let us know what this Bronco costs that we're sitting in. Okay, speaking of sitting, y'all better sit down. <laughs> $74,539 as she sits. So of course that's Canadian and yeah, that's, that's expensive, man. There's no two ways around it. Ford has been pretty aggressive with their pricing, but it's not right out of line with the Wrangler. The, the Jeep Wrangler in most cases is a little bit less expensive, but uh, you know, a couple thousand bucks. So Ford did their homework and it's, it's right there with Jeep, just, just a little bit more. If anything, it only takes a little bit of the shine off because really we've liked everything we've seen today. But when I hear that kind of number, my attitude is always, well, for that kind of money, it better impress me. <laughs> now, I think the biggest challenge Ford has is to come up with a competitor for the Jeep Wave. We all know about the Jeep Wave. Go down the road, wave for everybody in a Jeep. So I want to suggest right now, the Bronco Wave. <laughs> okay, I'm introducing it. Well, it's gotta be a B, you know, I don't, I don't know. It's weird, but anyway, you're, you're right. Yeah, they got to come up with, <laughs> I, I mean, the Jeep wave started on its own, not with Jeep, but I mean, you could just see Ford inventing one. Hey, so. Bronco. <laughs> <laughs>we are coming to the end of this video it's been a great day although i gotta tell you this has just been a little taste and i want more so i cannot wait to get this bronco back on our trails and do some real tough off-roading and you know what my i think my big takeaway is thank god for the jeep wrangler because if the jeep wrangler hadn't have stuck around for all those years we wouldn't have a ford bronco today and i'm so happy that ford jumped into this segment and really decided to take it to the wrangler and trust me this bronco is definitely the real deal so guys that's it for this video make sure you come back in the future for more bronco testing and i want to hear what you think so go below leave me a comment hit like hit subscribe hit join to become a member of the truck king channel and then come right back here to see what we're testing next See ya.